Hi, uh, my name is Rupa. I'm from previously Kimalus Networks uh, and now NVIDIA. And uh, I'll be talking about the DENT project, uh, the Distributed Enterprise Linux Foundation project that started earlier this year. Um, my co-speaker, Aviyad from Mellanox, who's also part of NVIDIA right now, will uh, not be able to join us today, but um, yeah, let's let's get started. So again, a little bit about me. I have I was an early employee at Cumulus, which uh, means I was uh, at the very beginning of uh, the open networking revolution. So I've been at the center of all the news about all network operating systems that came along since the last ten years. A few um, <clears throat> goals and <clears throat> and an outline of the talk. A little. Sorry, I have a bit of an echo. Um, I'll be I'll be talking about introduction to the open networking, um, Dent architecture, Linux native software architecture for Switch ASICs, Linux switch dev drivers. Dent project itself, um, and where can you find the Dent uh, project details? So uh, this screen is familiar to most of most of us who have been in the center of open networking revolution. Uh, it's been a, oh, close to a decade now, but uh, legacy systems are still around. But then the whole open networking revolution with OCP, with Linux Foundation, it's become very prominent in the data center and uh, cloud and um, and so on. So if you see the, um, in this slide, if you see the evolution of open network operating systems, um, there are different tailored to different markets. Um, for example, uh, for the cloud, there is Sonic and FBOSS from, um, Sonic is from Microsoft and FBOSS is from Facebook. Um, and for telecom, you have Danos, uh, which I think was a contribution from at and And uh, for the data center, there have been um, uh, operating systems, commercially open operating systems, uh, not in a community sense, but uh, the disaggregated open networking operating systems like Cumulus Linux, which I was part of for a really long time, or am still am, PK8 and so on. I'm missing some names, of course. Um, but now the recent one is distributed enterprise and that targets for the edge market, um, open networking, network operating system for the distributed enterprise and edge. Um, and it's a Linux foundation project. There is a reference to this at the end of, uh, in the references section in the Linux foundation uh, announcement. So what is DENT? So DENT is a new operating system uh, for the networking at the edge. Um, and for example, campus, edge retail, remote office, branch office, and so on. Uh, what, how is it different from the other network operating systems out there is basically it uses the Linux networking API and switch dev for offload to switch ASIC. I'll talk a little more about switch ASIC, uh, switch dev, the switch dev project, the Linux kernel switch dev project. But uh, Cumulus Linux is also a Linux networking API based uh, network operating system. So it's very familiar to me, especially. And I was also part of uh, when the switch dev um, movement started or the project started in the Linux kernel. So what, um, sorry, um, the founding members of Dent, uh, the premier members are uh, these, Amazon, Cumulus, uh, Delta, Marvel, Mellanox, Winston, Edgecore. Um, and Amazon was the uh, leader in starting the project and it brought along the community and Linux Foundation together. So edge deployments, what are the requirements of an edge NOS? Right, so a network operating system, open, disaggregated is all clear. Um, for a cloud, basically you need a um, routing stack and the usual protocols and the switch data plane forwarding um, and the CPU forwarding uh, plane and so on. So for the edge, there are a few things different. Uh, of course, the modern open disaggregated is common to all of them. 
build for automation and scale, um, and you are trying to, in this model for open networking, you are trying to uniform the operational model, leverage some of the data center automation tools or networking tools and best practices or whatever we have learned with open networking to, um, to campus and edge. What this also gives you is a simplified architecture, operations and cost uh, efficiency. This again comes um, due to the nature of uh, the open networking, uh, flexibility and control. So what is uh, the DENT NOS uh, critical or the central point of how it's different from the other network operating systems? So we have seen um, Linux kernel offloading to hardware, right? It's also called network acceleration or network hardware acceleration. Basically, uh, the architecture or the Linux system, you submit drivers, you have those drivers in the kernel, it recognizes your device and it can accelerate your um, networking or any function that your device provides. So if your device is not there, that function is gets executed in software and when the device is present or the driver is present or the hardware is present, it gets offloaded to uh, the hardware. So this NICs and NPUs have followed this model in the Linux world for a really long time, right? Uh, you know when your NIC driver is there and when you know you can simulate a NIC driver on in KVM or so on, but you know, when you have the hardware, it just uh, offloads to hardware. So the model is the model of switch dev or the model of dent NAS is based on that. Basically your switch ports, they appear as NIC ports. Your kernel, uh, Linux kernel, layer two forwarding, layer three forwarding and multicast VXLAN and so on that you're very familiar with on the host OS or VM on Linux. You will see that um, you can do that on a dent system. So that's the whole idea of the architecture. Um, and on the right, there is a picture, switch ports as NIC ports, then you have the Linux networking API and the hardware offload API. So the software architecture guiding principles, again, is basically it needs to be an open source Linux based, so it's Debian based. So for all practical purposes, it's a Debian system, right? It's Debian systems with some uh, add-ons for things. Uh, a massive, this provides you a massive Linux ecosystem uh, to, or Debian ecosystem uh, to choose from packages from. And um, you have a Linux native accelerated a stack that is accelerated by switch ASIC hardware, open protocol implementations with FRR being the control plane, then you have WRF and VXLAN, uh, VRRP, all these implementations already exist on Linux. Uh, and they have been, um, they've gone through another, um, a big boost in open source development in these areas or in these protocol implementations with FRR and so on in the past uh, few years. And of course, simplified modern architecture is just as plain your switch uh, or your edge switch is basically a plain Linux box. You do everything that you could on a Linux box on your server, for example. Um, a little bit about the SwitchDev project. Again, uh, like I mentioned, um, it's SwitchDev is a name given to the Linux kernel support for Switch ASICs. And what that means is you have Switch ASIC drivers in the upstream kernel. The kernel has hardware offload extensions for these Switch ASICs, and basically hooks in the routing code, neighbor, bridging, and so on. Initial APIs were prefixed with switch dev and the name stuck, but um, the name, you won't find the name in APIs and so on, um, but quickly evolved to using existing kernel infrastructure like uh, notifiers and so on. There's a new Netlink API. Uh, dev, Netlink is a protocol for kernel, Linux kernel uh, user space communication. It's an IPC uh, mechanism in Linux. And a new API uh, called DevLink was born to actually uh, tailor to this particular switch ASIC hardware uh, configuration and you know resource uh, viewing resources, debugability, and so on. And like any other technology in the Linux kernel, DevLink uh, Dev API is actually 
proliferated to other areas, like example, the NIC teams or the server teams are also, server drivers are also using them, which is a great thing. Again, this is another uh, path to uniformity between a switch uh, ASIC driver and you know, a server. And that was the whole intention of the switch dev project. Um, and um, the Linux API based uh, open networking, network operating system. So this is an overall picture of the Dent architecture. Um, like I mentioned, this, this will be familiar to people who have looked at network operating systems based on um, the Linux kernel API or Linux native networking API like Cumulus Linux. So what we're talking about here is your applications that are here are Linux applications. Some of this, for example, LLDPD comes from the Debian uh, ecosystem. DHCP comes from the Debian ecosystem. FRR is, as, um, as you guys know, is a routing stack, an open implementation uh, routing stack. It has BGP, OSPF, and many others. And it was previously Quagga. And now it's become one of the uh, yeah massive protocols suite. Actually, VRRPD it also has a VRRPD implementation. So, FRR has various backends, and one of its backends is Linux, and it can work on a Linux any Linux system. And it works on a Linux system as it is a Linux system. For example, you can run it on a Red Hat. It'll use a kernel for its data plane. But what the switch dev driver here, what it's going to do is it's going to, um, uh, the control plane is going to interact with the Linux kernel and the hooks in all of these subsystems will eventually lead to the driver and then to the ASIC. Okay, that's the whole idea of the architecture. So the applications don't know that there is a switch driver on ASIC. Uh, but the uh, what this also enables you to do is you can run Dent NAS as a virtual machine um, that comes for free. Uh, basically, as long as if you if you're not running a hardware and a switch ASIC, this top stack of Linux will continue to function like any other um, like a software Linux system. So that's the uh, that's the power of the architecture. The Dent ecosystem, um, it's a lot of, um, like any other project actually, any other open source, um, net, something like a network operating system, which is huge enough to have many players. Um, Dent has many uh, communities coming together. Um, ONI, which was part of, is part of the open networking revolution and OCP. Um, then of course, Linux, Debian, uh, Switched Up Project, Ansible, and Puppet Chef, the other automation tools that you're very familiar with on the server, FR routing stack, um, OCP again with ONL. I'll talk a little bit about ONL's presence in Dent. And of course, the Linux Foundation that started this project or is hosting the project. So um, Dent hardware and software, a little bit of details. Um, the three ODMs, um, Acton, Delta Networks, and Vistron, uh, two ASIC vendors, Marvel and Mellanox. Um, and I, of course, I I am part of NVIDIA Mellanox and NVIDIA Cumulus. So I uh, the examples that I use later on in the slides are all about uh, taken on a Mellanox platform. So you have three different uh, switches, switch configurations as seen here. And PoE, uh, if I've not mentioned earlier, PoE is one of the... Um, different features that you will see requirement uh, in an edge NOS or an edge retail NOS, um, power over Ethernet. So what are Dent NOS components? Open Networking Linux, um, ONL, this is an OCP project. It provides you with a Debian-based uh, image build e system uh, and platform drivers or a platform abstraction. Um, and it was easier for the Dent project to actually start with ONL as a base because it's an already uh, available open uh, project uh, out there. So beyond that, it has the latest kernel, uh, 5.6, and it may go um, to a newer kernel. And 
the kernel is because the kernel being on a latest kernel is because of switched up drivers coming from Marvel and Mellanox has had their switched up drivers for a few years now. Uh, they are in the upstream kernel. Any Linux kernel has them. It's called as MLXSW. Uh, Marvel's drivers are in progress. They are work in progress right now. It's close to be getting into the kernel. Um, and Linux platform drivers. Again, Linux has supported platform drivers using SysFS and uh, tools that use SysFS, right? So the DEN project is going to support both because of its ONL um, roots. It's going to support ONLP drivers. And uh, because it's Linux, it'll also support Linux platform drivers. And the reference that I've put there for the Linux platform drivers is actually from a Mellanox uh, documentation, which is public. Uh, software and control plane, of course, it's a Debian ecosystem. Lots of uh, protocol implementations like LLDPD, FRR, IFAB have done too for network interface configuration. And additional capabilities is something like power over Ethernet. So then to V1 features, um, this is, um, I think it goes to the next slide as well. Uh, but this is the base features that Dent V1 release will come out with, um, L basic LLDP, SSH, and so on. And in terms of networking functionality uh, for edge uh, retail, it is um, L2 bridging, VLAN aware, um, routing, ECMP. Then in terms of protocols, again, there is STP, BGP. BGP is the only routing protocol. Um, VRRP with FRR as well. Going further, again, lag. Lag uh, lag is very uh, base feature for any NAS right now. Um, debug tooling, Ansible playbooks, DHCP relay, DHCP server, um, ETH tool, and so on. So V2 features. V2 features are still being discussed. I'm just going to have this here for just for records because uh, the DENT uh, technical steering committee is actually trying to come up with this uh, list for V2. And the release, V1 is supposed to come out before the end of this year. It's almost ready um, and um, uh, out anytime soon once the Marvel switched up driver is accepted. And thanks to Steve Noble from the Dent project, actually, to uh, give me some of these detailed slides and features that are being worked on. So um, the next few slides, actually three slides, I have screenshots about um, how, how different is Linux native networking? What does that mean? Uh, so this is uh, the first one actually just shows you that this is a Debian system. And the next two are basically showing you how do you see your ports. It's the simple uh, IP link show from the IP root route to uh, command suite to look at your switch port details. Okay. So basically, you can run all your networking commands that you run on your server on your switch. Um, again, ETH tool is everybody's. If you're familiar with debugging networking problems on ETH, on servers, ETH tool is the interface to the kernel for L1 config and uh, show and so on. So this is an example how you can see your link sta states. And this is all these slides were taken on and um, examples were taken on a Dent uh, Spectrum Mellanox box. So you can see the driver Mellanox is MLXSW Spectrum. Um, So DevLink, I mentioned DevLink earlier. DevLink is another Netlink API, uh, which uh, is uh, getting popular on the servers too, or is getting uh, getting used into or adapted into different configurations on the servers. For example, SRIOV or Nix and so on. Um, this is a simple example how uh, DevLink is an API to look at the switch hardware on its own it's kind of like an ETH tool, if you're fam very familiar with ETH tool on Linux. Um, but it will, uh, it it can work on your network interface, like, you know, ETH0, ETH1, um, and so on. The, your switch ports are here, SWP1, SWP2. But it can also work on directly PCI, 
if your switch a6 cpu is a pci endpoint it can directly work on on that um and port um port uh splitting port splitting is also a function of devlink you can do port breakouts with devlink so what what else does um the edge uh, deployment or what are the possibilities of having an open networking NOS at, at the edge, uh, Linux-based open networking NOS. So basically this slide is just telling you that, you know, we have had experiments where we run, uh, for example, the switched up driver, or we have experimented or have deployments with, you know, a Kubernetes master running on the, um, on the, on the switch, which can manage your edge rack right all the other applications on the edge rack so things like that uh, container runtime comes for free because debian actually has a container runtime docker you can install docker and so on so there are many possibilities uh, you can treat your um, dent switch as one of your systems in your edge rack um, and what this means is you have that power of uniformity in automation, provisioning, and operations across your edge cluster, ability to extend, you know, native containerized uh, applications to your switch to, uh, you know, move the applications, containerized applications from a data center to your edge rack, to your edge switch from the cloud and so on. And of course, you're limited by the CPU that are, is present on the dents or present on any of these switches, but, you know, uh, people run do run apps on um, on your on switch, uh, especially again monitoring apps. You don't need another server for your monitoring app. You know monitoring application you can possibly run it on your switch. Um, so though Dent is edge first, um, it the architecture doesn't stop it from being edge first. For example, the features that we're talking about in the next um, uh, V2 is sometimes, in some cases, it's beyond beyond uh, edge. Where to find Dent? There is an open mailing list. There is a weekly call. In fact, the call is uh, um, on. Actually, sorry, I'm, I forget that this is a recording, so it's in uh, a few minutes from now. But um, the Dent project, the code is there. Uh, the seed code from um, Amazon and the other vendors. Um, and it is going to be public once uh, when V1 is released, which should be in uh, in about time, actually, in a few weeks or months. Um, yeah, this is what that talks about. And some references of all the projects, other projects that um, Dent is using, the switch of drivers and so on. That's that concludes my talk. Hey, um, hey, um, hey, um, hey, um, sorry, sorry. Hello, sorry about that um, feedback. So I do see a few questions. Um, I've tried to respond a few, respond to a few, so I'm just going to uh, read them here. Is NAT also hardware accelerated at the ASIC? Yes, it's um, not in the DENT project, but um, many implementations today do uh, have uh, NAT offloaded through Linux, basically Linux NAT offloaded to switch ASIC. Uh, actually, since Cumulus Linux reference has come up there, Cumulus Linux does offload kernel uh, NAT to ASIC. Um, and DENT, of course, if DENT had to support uh, NAT to switch ASIC, it needs the switched dev drivers to support NAT. And as far as I know, there is no switched dev driver supporting uh, NAT today. 
The other question is, does Dent implement OpenFlow? It does not implement OpenFlow today for, um, for the VBAN release or it's not in the pipeline, but uh, there is no reason for it to not implement or architecturally there is no limitation as long as uh, one of the ways um, OpenFlow can be implemented is an OpenFlow app uh, having to translate into the kernel and kernel to switch step driver. So that's another way. Or most of the OpenFlow implementations like OpenVSwitch could also run on the switch. And um, as long as the open switch, as you guys know, most of it uh, on the service today uses the TC offload, uh, rule offload. So it can, um, and the switch chip drivers do support some sort of TC offload, and they can be extended to support open flow, but not uh, currently planned. What monitoring features are supported in Dent, like Prometheus endpoint? Um, there is no, I mean, the Dent project is not putting out any monitoring agent right now, but there is no reason a Prometheus endpoint cannot run, right? It's, it's just a open uh, Linux box. And uh, similar example on Cumulus, there are many people who do that already. Uh, it's, uh, it's possible. I think uh, that's all the questions. So on the kernel version again, I did respond on uh, chat. It's um, it's 5.6 right now. There is a plan to move to 5.8, uh, but it could move to a long-term stable kernel once uh, that is announced. And any other questions? Does it miss any? And of course, I did respond to the question on how is uh, Dent and Cumulus Linux different. Cumulus Linux is, again, based on the same principles. Your app just talks to the Linux API, and uh, Cumulus does the magic. And the magic that Cumulus does is it also supports user space SDKs, uh, translates uh, from the kernel to the SDK. Uh, and Dent is uh, based on an open source driver for the switch ASIC. Um, yeah, because it's an open source project and it does not have the paper closed uh, SDKs. But uh, in that context, you have to know, realize that Cumulus started way long ago, where only SDKs or closed source SDKs uh, was there. And even today, I think SDKs do uh, for any switch ASIC are critical and then all vendors support them and they are usually more uh, feature rich. Um, with all the questions for now, I can wait in for any questions to come in. There is a weekly call for Dent. Uh, it, uh, it's on Wednesday, 7 a.m. PST. Um, I think the uh, information is on the Dent project, if anybody wants to join in and listen in. Thanks, thanks everybody.